Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and this is my wrap up for the Book Nerdathon and also the Cramathon. I did not know I was going to participate in the Cramathon until it was about over and then I kind of started taking stock of what I had read and I had actually met most of the challenges. So I thought I would show you the books that I read during the Cramathon which has just ended and then December 7th through 11th was the Book Nerdathon and that was sponsored by Becca the book reviewer and Amanda the glittery nerd and I'll link their channels down below. They had 10 challenges. It was a five day readathon and I was able to meet all of the challenges. So let me show you what I read. Now a couple of the books meet several challenges. So rather than go in order of challenges, I'm just going to show you the books and tell you what challenges they met. It just so happened that my daughter Katie had picked up this book just a couple of days before the book nerdathon. We were at the library and they had a big display of graphic novels and she's read The Lightning Thief and I've read the whole series and she saw this on the table and she thought I might like to read it and she thought she might like to read it so she picked it up and it's the graphic novel of Percy Jackson and the Olympians The Lightning Thief. So you can see and the art is by Attila Futaki and the adaptation, I guess the text adaptation, is by Robert Venditti. And of course, the original Lightning Thief is by Rick Riordan. And so this book met actually several of the challenges. It met the challenge to read a graphic novel. It also met the challenge to read a book featuring mythology. It also probably could have counted to meet the challenge of read a book that was made into a movie, but I actually read a different book for that challenge, so I didn't count this for that. And then it could probably count as a middle grade book. However, this is labeled YA and it came from the teen room at our library. So I'm not really sure why in particular that this is labeled teen because you know of course the Percy Jackson books are considered middle grade books. So I did read a fourth grade book that I'm counting for that but I figure between the two of them I've got middle grade covered. So it met two and possibly four of the challenges on the book marathon. Now uh, as I said, it, uh, one of the challenges is to read a book that was made into a movie. Of course, we all know The Lightning Thief was made into a movie, but I also read The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, and I accidentally took it back to the library the other day, forgetting that I needed to make this video. I, I will get a copy of it back from the library before I do my end of the month wrap up, so if you're interested in knowing a little more about that book, I'll talk about that then. All right, now this book called Blast Off, it's from the Alien In My Pocket series, is a fourth grade book, but I'm going to count it as my middle grade book because really fourth, fifth, they're all kind of in the middle. If you, if you looked at kindergarten through 12, fourth could be edging your way towards the middle, so I'm going to count it. This is one of the Florida Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists for 2015-2016, which was the main reason I was reading it, but I am counting it for that challenge, and I will be doing a wrap-up of all of the fourth grade books uh, later on at the end of the month. I've still got a couple to read at this point, but I, um, if you want to know about this book, I will talk about it more then. For this challenge, though, I counted this for my middle grade book, and also challenge number 10 was to read a sci-fi book. And also the challenge number six was to read a book that contains new technology. And the main character's brother had invented an electronic fork. So I thought that was pretty good. And um, that is definitely some new technology that I have not seen before. Now I've heard of electric knives, but I haven't heard of electric forks. So I think that's kind of cute. And this is really a fun little story. And it can count as sci-fi because it has an alien in it. And it's just really cute. So I will talk more about it uh, in the uh, Sunshine State book wrap-up. One of the challenges was to read a book set in school. I read Homeroom Diaries by James Patterson and Lisa Papa Dimitriou, and this is a book set in high school. Uh, one of the challenges on the Ultimate Reading Challenge was to read a book set in high school, so this counted for the Ultimate Reading Challenge as well as the Book Nerdathon. The very first challenge on the Book Nerdathon was to read a book featuring video games. This book was one I picked up at a book sale not too long ago. It's called Mastering Nintendo Video Games, Tips, Tricks, and Strategies. And I think I got this for a quarter or ten cents. I have an original Nintendo and I thought maybe this might give me some tips because I have never actually mastered Super Mario Brothers. I've gotten to level eight and I can't seem to get through it and rescue the princess. Uh, I also was hoping to get some help with Zelda. This did not have, this only had Zelda 2. It did not have the original Zelda, which is the game I have. So it didn't help me out a lot, but I did go through and read all of the summaries and backstories for all of the video games that are listed here. And then I did read the 
tips and hints for Super Mario Brothers. Now, most of the ones in here, I believe I already knew, and I think there was one thing that I don't remember if I had known about or not. I haven't played it in some time. Our console is actually out of commission right now, but I don't think it's completely dead. It just is going to take a little bit, a, a tiny bit of tweaking and repairing to get it up and running again. It didn't end up helping me as much as I hoped because most of the games listed in here are games that I do not have. But it was still fun to take a look back at some of these games. I already had quite a few books on my December TBR and I'm actually doing really good getting those checked off my list. But the other prompt on the Book Nerdathon is to read a book picked at random. And I thought, I cannot add another book to my TBR. So what I did was I took all of, I put all of the names of everything I plan to read in December and on the little slips of paper. And I had my daughter draw one out because I thought, well, I already know I'm going to read it this month. So whichever one I picked, I would read for the Book Nerdathon rather than put it off or postpone it till later in the month. So my daughter pulled out Sold by Patricia McCormick. I had planned to read this to meet the goal of read a book that will make you cry. And as I was reading it, I didn't think that it was going to make me cry, but right at the end, it just, the enormity of it all just got to me and I just lost it. <laughs> so yeah, this is really a heavy book and it's just, it's wonderfully told, it's beautifully told. It's about a girl who was sold into sex slavery and it really is a must read, I think. I think we all need to be aware of what of what is going on in the world and this was written after the author interviewed quite a few girls in Nepal and got some of them to tell their story and then she compiled all those stories into this one character of Lakshmi and told basically her story so it's beautiful and it's horrific and it's sad um, but there's hope so it's, um, I, I definitely recommend this book. It's very short and easy to read. I think I read it all in one day. It, it's double spaced. Some pages hardly have any words on a page. So it's a very, very quick read and I highly recommend it. All right, so the Cramathon was December 19th through the 22nd. It was only four days and it was hosted by Whitty Novels and I will link her channel down below. There were seven challenges to the Cramathon. One of them was to read an audiobook. Well, I have two audiobooks going for this month and they're both chunkers, but I made progress in both of them. One of them is Clan of the Cave Bear. I'm actually almost finished with this one. I think I'm on the next to the last tape and I'm listening to this in my car. It's a book on cassette. Cassette player works in my car, so I had picked this up at a book sale a while back, and I'm finally getting to it. I'm actually really enjoying this. At first, I thought it was going to be kind of slow and cumbersome, but it picked up pretty quickly, and I'm really, uh, I am really liking it. I think I'm going to continue on with the series. Then the other audiobook I am listening to in my kitchen. I just got started on this one a few days ago. This is Dune, the um, the original, the first in the series, the classic sci-fi fantasy by Frank Herbert. Um, and I remember, as I'm listening to it now, I'm remembering a good bit of the movie as it goes. I don't remember how it ends or anything, but I do remember seeing at least the beginning of the movie several times. And I remember the sandworms, and, and I can picture what the actors look like. So I, I just have never picked up the book. It's pretty large. It's 18 discs. So it's um, it'll take me definitely till the end of the month, and maybe even a little longer unless I get on the ball with it. The second challenge was to read a bind-up. I'm not even sure I have any bind-ups, except maybe this one. The Bible. This really is a bind-up of 66 books. And so um, I try to read a little bit each night, and so I'm counting it for this challenge. The challenge number three was to finish a series or read a book that's the last in a series. Well, I didn't finish a series, but I was reading this one anyway, and I noticed that there's only three Bob books. And this is the third one. So I'm going to count it for this challenge. This is A Gift from Bob by James Bowen. And I tell you, I want to go back and read the other two Bob the Cat books. This one is beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's a story of hope. And uh, James Bowen is a man in England who basically pulled himself up by his bootstraps and got himself out of a life of drug abuse and living on the streets. And it was all with the help of 
a street cat named Bob and this was really good this is a good Christmas read not so much a tearjerker but very heartwarming and I enjoyed it a lot I was reading kind of a little bit along over the past few days and I just finished it up on the 22nd challenge number four is to read a book with less than 200 pages I read fortunately the milk by Neil Gaiman I was already going to read this one as well this is one of the Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists for this uh, for this year and it is also a fourth grade book so I will be talking about this when I do my fourth grade wrap up very soon along with the alien in my pocket book and a, a couple of others that I have read this month the fifth challenge was to read a book that you DNF would I had forgotten about that challenge until last night and when I finished up my graphic novel challenge I pulled these two books out these are both books that I have started but not finished that I do want to finish Skipping Christmas by John Grisham I had planned to read for the ultimate reading challenge but then I ended up reading A Christmas Carol for my book set at Christmas and then The Bad Beginning which is the first book in a series of unfortunate events. I had picked this up one day when I was subbing and I had some time and I picked this up in the school library and read part of it and uh, always intended to get back to it and just never have. I started trying to read some of this. It was late at night on the 22nd and I just got too sleepy and I could not read any more of it. Had I realized I was going to be that close to finishing the whole, all of the Cremathon challenges, I would have read it sooner. So challenge number five, to read a book you DNF'd, I did not finish. Then challenge number six is to read a graphic novel. This was in my book outlet, Black Friday Hall. This is a graphic novel, a parody of The Hunger Games called The Hunger Pains. I did not look at any of the reviews of this and I started reading it and I started feeling kind of bad that I thought, man, I thought I was going to like this better and it was just kind of gross. and. So I, I did get through it. It was a little after midnight when I finished it up. Um, and so technically I didn't finish it by the 22nd, but I was pretty close and I did finish it before I went to bed. And I, uh, I just didn't care for it. So this morning I looked at some of the reviews and it got pretty much all ones and twos. And I think I gave it a two and that was probably being generous. If you've seen this book on Book Outlet and you want to get it, it's not very expensive, but um, it's, it, it's just pretty gross and it's silly. Now I did enjoy some of the names for the characters. Uh, Prim is Dim, uh, Gale is Flail, Pan Am is Pan Slam, Pita is Pikachu, Pika or Pikachu. Oh. Katniss is a rat kiss. <laughs> so it's just crazy. When I was younger, Mad Magazine was really popular. And I didn't read Mad Magazine much, but because I didn't really care for that kind of yucky style. But this kind of reminds me of that. So if you are a fan of Mad Magazine, you might like this book but um, it's not my thing. Challenge number seven was to read five books. So I actually finished four books. Three of them I've already shown you. The Hunger Pains, Fortunately the Milk, and A Gift from Bob. Then I also finished The 14th Goldfish by Jennifer L. Holm. It's another one of the Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists and I will include that in the wrap up for that. I didn't fin finish a fifth book but I did make progress in my two audiobooks and uh, also did my Bible reading. So uh, since I'm counting that for this challenge, I would say that I completed five out of the seven challenges and made progress towards the others so I think that is a success and I just appreciate all of you guys who host readathons because those are really motivating to me it's the opposite for some people but for me they're very motivating and I'm very task oriented so I really do enjoy readathons and challenges because it propels me to go ahead and do what I need to do to meet those goals. So that's all I have for this video. I will do a complete monthly wrap up at the end of December, but I just wanted to show you those books that way because I'm reading quite a bit in December. So if I go ahead and get some of these books out of the way, then I will not have as much explanations to do at the end of December. So I thought I would just go ahead and let you know that I participated in those two readathons. I understand that there's going to be a TBR Takedown 3.0 coming up very soon and then um, maybe even uh, I thought I heard something about a book tubathon so be on the lookout for those if you want to participate then definitely join in they're a lot of fun and I guess that's all I have for this video I hope you're having a great day read a good book and God bless you